get up and actually start cutting back some of the shrubs because as you can see um, I already actually kind of started doing some of it but um, since the last time that we actually cut the shrubs it kind of grew up a little bit so I'm just gonna kind of finish up cutting the, the shrubs of course we have to get up on the ladder and um, be able to uh, cut what we need to cut situation where they get overgrown they get out of out of whack and then the interesting thing like with these bushes here I ended up um, cutting out some of the middle branches because they were growing too far over into my neighbor's yard and so with them growing over into my neighbor's yard I wanted to kind of make sure that um, I kept them in line and so I ended up uh, cutting back, so that's why you kind of see like some barren spaces in here. So little bit by little bit, Dave, you know, every time I do a cut, I'll actually cut out some of the barren branches. And the interesting thing is, is that once you cut out some of the barren branches, then you start seeing a lot of new growth. Now these have had new growth on the bottom um, and they haven't quite filled in on this side yet, but a lot of that has a lot to do with some of the vines that are growing up and just choking out some of the growth. So what I do is just pull these vines off and to make sure that they don't kill the uh, shrub. So this is pretty much the finished product. Now I'm gonna have to go back through and um, pull all of the leftover branches off from, uh, well, the branches that I actually ended up cutting. Um, now it doesn't actually necessarily take that long to cut it once you've maintained it. But as you can see on this side, it's a little fuller because I'm letting it bloom out. Um, and take its, its natural course. On the other side, I'm actually training new shrubs on how to grow, and I want those to pretty much kind of grow straight up, not necessarily get any wider than they already are. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rake and actually rake out the leaves um, on my neighbor's side. So with raking, um, as I've done many times, in the past is actually really quite helpful for the grass because you're actually pulling out any of the leaves or anything like that that have um, kind of tried to choke some of the roots of the grass.
So now I'm back on my side of the bushes. And as you can see, I'm gonna have to um, start back to raking back the grass because with the heat that we've actually had for the last couple of days, um, it actually singed some of the grass. And then of course, as you can see, I'll have to do some weeding in between the shrubs again. Say about the Great States lawnmower is that with utilizing that for going on almost about a couple of months now, it has really changed the way that the yard looks. Now, like I said, this grass is a mixture of St. Augustine grass and also a mixture of uh, rye grass. Um, like I was saying, my mother put out the St. Augustine grass and then I ended up um, going over it with a little bit of uh, rye grass, primarily because the St. Augustine grass here in Michigan does not germinate until later on. So you're dealing with just a lot of um, brown grass for a while. But as you can see, as time goes on, it gets nice, luscious, and green. The next thing I end up doing is I end up taking the rake and just pulling the cut branches off from in between the shrubs or off from the tops of the shrubs so that therefore, um, as time goes on, of course the dead branches are going to turn brown and you don't necessarily want that to be in your shrubs later on because they do start showing up. So now after you get finished raking the um, tops of the shrubs, then you want to kind of reform the shrubs because of course they've gotten out of whack by pulling them back and forth. Re-rake the lawn. Of course, pretty much do the same thing on my neighbor's side. 